This is a out of box application created by the ASP.NET Web API template, which already comes with Swagger implementation. So here to the dependency injection, the Swagger related dependencies are added using the extension method at Swagger gen. And here in the application also, the middleware for adding the Swagger and Swagger UI are added through the extension methods use Swagger and use Swagger UI. If you want the Swagger to be available beyond development, then you just have to get rid of these two statements so that it is available across multiple environment. And then if we run this, this is going to come up with the out of box Swagger UI. And it shows up the one method that we have is for weather forecast. This is the only API we have. And you can see here in weather forecast, it returns a 200 for a success message. And this is the body of the message which is expected by the user. Now, the reason it is able to show this body from here, it is mainly because in the API itself, the return has an I enumerable of weather forecast. So the swagger is able to identify that this is an I enumerable, which is denoted by this array. And then inside that it is showing up the weather forecast. Now let's say we return a 400 error. So one thing is I added action result into this so that we can return both 200 as well as other response. For the time being, I'm just going to return a bad request, which is for 400. Now this code will be unreachable, but that's okay. This is just to show how the swagger is going to behave after you make this change. So now if I run this application, the swagger app will show up. But here, when I expand, I do not see any information which says that it is going to return a 400. It just shows 200 again, which means by default from this code, the Swagger is not able to figure out what all response we are going to return. And this is where it is important for documentation purpose, as well as for the user who are going to use your API to tell them what all responses are expected from a web API. And for that, we are going to use an attribute here. And what we are going to use here is produces response type. Produces response type is an attribute. And this attribute has three different overloads. The first one takes a status code, which is an integer, which can be 200, 400, and others. The second one takes a type and status code. And third one takes type, status code, content type, and additional content type. These are different content type that can be returned by the API. So here, what we are going to do is let's start with the status code. So for status code, we can say, status code dot bad request. So this is what we can use. And if we just use that, and then also given that we are also returning 200, let's just add for the completion that produces response type status codes dot okay. And for this one, for the 200 OK, we can pass the type also, which is the second overload. So for the type, we can say type of I enumerable of weather forecast, that's the type and status code of 200. So that is what we can do. And now if I run this application, if I expand the Swagger definition, I can see that it says it returns 200 success with this data and then 400 bad request. Now for 400 bad request, it just has a default 
schema which is picked up. Now we don't want that, we want to return appropriate type with 400. So what we can do is we can create a type and for that we can create a new class and it can be error response class. So we can name it as. And for the error response class, can have few properties. So one can be error, second can be message, error can be code, actually don't need error. We can have message, code, and then we can have a request ID, which is a correlation ID. So let's say these are the three things that we are going to expose as a part of the error response class. So now if we come here for the bad request, we can send a new error response with the message of I'm just saying bad request but it will be based on whatever we want to do and now at this point in time here for the bad request portion we can say type of error response. So now we are specifying the type for the bad request also. At this point in time, if we run the application and here if we expand, now for the bad request, we can see the expected schema, the schema that we have defined, which is message code and request ID. So this is going to give the user an opportunity to understand what are the different error response that can come from an API and program for that. And also if I open up this swagger.json file from here, here also we can see that for different responses, we have 400 bad request and also for 200, the same thing. And when it comes to schema, we can see the schema for the date the weather forecast and also for error response. We can see the error response schema is also available here. So from this one, usually the code generators are able to generate a code from here. And also we can see, for example, for reference, it shows that it's going to return the error reference. Now here it is showing content type as all the three, which is text plane, application JSON, and text JSON, but we can define exactly what we want in this case, or what kind of response we are going to return. Now here, what we can do if we want to define what kind of format it consumes or produces, we can use the consumes, and for consumes, we can provide what kind of content type and a param of content type, other content type as you can see here, and then we can also have what is the type of the request it consumes and what is the content type. Now in this case, this is a get, but consumes is going to be more useful for post. But let's say just for the demonstration, media type names dot application dot JSON. And for the time being, let's change this to a post. And here instead of HTTP get, let's make it as HTTP post. And for the parameter here, let's take the same thing because it's just for demonstration. So let's take the same thing. Let's take weather forecast as an object. We're not going to use it, but this is just to show the media type. And now here you can see that the request body, it shows the weather forecast and for the response type by default it comes as application.json and that's the only thing is available and that is because we have consumes json only but if i comment this out and run this application when i go to consumes i should be able to see more than just json and you can see i see all the three similarly let's get this back and for the response media type what we can do is we can do the same thing we can say produces and for the produces we can use the content type here and for content type i'll do the same thing i'll just copy paste from the 
line before which is media type dot application dot json and now let's run this application and now if i go here we can see that it is showing only application.json as the media type and same thing is going to happen when I open the swagger.json and you can see that produces for response it says 200 and content type is only application.json and this is the schema same for 200 only application.json this is the schema and for post here for the operation you can see that the request body content only application.json and the schema is weather focused. So this is how we can use the produces and consumes as well as produces response type to give much better documentation to the user so that the contracts are very clear to the user what all are expected out of an API. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.